Hello friends, you are welcome to Nuni Asal's English classes. Friends, today we will study first chapter of 12th class and the title of the chapter is The Last Lesson. The last lesson is written by Alphonse Dodet who was a French a novelist and short story writer. Before we start with the explanation of the chapter, let's have a little insight into the setting of the chapter. Actually, the whole lesson depends on the Franco-Prussian War, the war which took place between France and Germany. The war began on 19th July 1870 and lasted up to 10th May 1871 and it took almost 10 months to complete. In 18th century, France and Germany used to be the power poles and France was having its own supremacy and hegemony over the world. Uh, that Germany was ruled by Wilhelm or also known as William the First. And those days France was ruled by King Napoleon the Third. These two were the kings of both the countries but the mastermind of this war is said to be Otto von Bismarck. Otto von Bismarck was the Chancellor of Germany and he came into power in 1865. The moment he came into power, he decided to change the power balance and he calculated the martial position, economic position and preparation of the army and all. And he got ensured that if that time the war could be uh, ensured and war could be waged against France, somehow if France could be incited to come forward and have a war with Germany, Germany was going to win. This idea he got very clearly after discussing with the uh, can say army chiefs and all the authorities. So they sent a message for the war to Napoleon III. But Napoleon III also knew that Germany had become powerful by that time and now he knew that uh, would be not good for even France. So he denied initially. He showed his unwillingness and reluctance for the war. So he sent his ambassador to the king of Germany, Wilhelm, Count Benedict. Count Benedict had a meeting with Wilhelm, William the first king of Germany and the document which came out, uh, I can say, as a deliberation and uh, which became the result of their deliberation and meeting is known as EMS Dispatch or Telegram. EMS Dispatch or Telegram, very popularly known as a historical document. This is emergency of medical services. They dis uh, discussed together and decided that war is not good for both the countries. So, finally, this EMS dispatch was given to Otto von Bismarck for the publication purpose. Otto von Bismarck was interested in war at any cost. So, he read the message and got dissatisfied. He willingly and purposefully changed the message, changed few words. The same will like we see in third, uh, Three Idiot, Three Idiot movie. Uh, Ranchordas Rancher that changes two words only in that letter which is being read by uh, you can say Chatur and this changes the message of all the letter we know it became makes it uh, very uh, funny as well as obscene also so the same way Otto von Bismarck also changed few words out of that document and now its tone and message became insulting and humiliating he published that document on 14th July 1870 and the same reached into the hand of Napoleon III also, the King of France also. After reading that message, Napoleon III felt very enraged, humiliated and insulted. He discussed with his army chief and all the other authorities and decided to have war with Germany. And on 19th July, just after five days of the publication of that document, he declared war against Germany. And then the rest of the things are just a history we know. The war lasted for 10 months, almost 10 months.
and it resulted into the defeat of France. This time, France lost this war against Germany. And this is what Otto von Bismarck wanted. After the defeat of France, as in uh, can you know, the compensation of the war loss, France had to give its two provinces and territories, that is Alsace and Lorraine. These two provinces, which are located just at the border of France and Germany, complete Alsace and some parts of Lorraine. This much part of the land was transferred as a compensation to German government. Now, these people suffered a lot because of this one. And this lesson revolves around the transfer of these two, or you can say the capture of these two territories by German government. Alphonse Dodet gives a prideful account of the people living in these two provinces. So this was the background of the chapter. So now let's see episodical description of the chapter. By the way, in lesson, uh, episodes are not given that much specifically, but we can find out the main events and we'll pick them out and weave our rest of the story around them only. So to begin with, we'll discuss a little about friends in dilemma. When the chapter opens, we know the student friends, school going student, he is in dilemma. He is in a fix whether to go to school or not go to school. The reason being, his teacher Mr. M. Hammer had given them the homework of participles and he hadn't studied those participles. So he was afraid of the teacher. Second thing, he was late also that day. So two reasons were there for making him decide whether to go to school or not go to school. Homework was not complete. Second thing, he was already late. So he thought that in place of going to school, if I buy a car and remain outside, I can enjoy the better weather conditions. That day, the weather conditions were very fine. Second thing, he could enjoy the French, uh, that uh, German soldiers who were drilling uh, just uh, behind that sawmill area. And third thing, he could enjoy the chirping of the birds in the forest. So these three things appealed him a lot and forced him to decide to buy back the school. But he was a student and you can say the child of strong will, iron will. He decided just against and he thought that I must go and he ran for the school. When he was going to school, then he came across the town hall bulletin board. The board and the crowd, he saw the crowd around the bulletin board. That bulletin board was the source of every type of the bad news since last two years, since the time when German took over Alsace and Lorraine. All the bad news, bad news, what are the bad news? Like loss of the battle, second thing, all the orders given by the commanding officer and the draft one, what is there? That is draft. What is this draft? We need to understand. Actually, whenever the country is in emergency, so he forces the citizens to join army. So draft is actually a government order to join the army and fight for the country. So whenever the government needed some more soldiers to fight for the country and even the German people, they wanted to make their army strong. So they sent a message to the people to send their youth and uh, recruit it. They used to recruit them into their army. So this governmental order for joining army was known as draft. So such type of the orders were just pasted on the bulletin board. People used to read and then they had to uh, send their young children. So this type of the things also were over there. So when he was going to school, he found a lot of people around the bulletin board and he just uh, knew something wrong must have been over there. Because since last two years, continuously they were getting only the bad and negative news from German people. But uh, he did not have that much time to stop by and then read that one. So he continued running for the school. From behind, one man who was a blacksmith named Watcher. He called him and said that, don't run so fast, Buck. You will get to your school in plenty of time. Actually, this is a very 
a beautiful line to understand with uh, deep insight why he says you will get to your school or reach to your school in plenty of time the word your is very crucial in this line you will get to your school in plenty of time meaning of this line is uh, this Mr. Walter he knew the German government had passed an order and the order was from tomorrow onwards French language would be replaced by German language but the child did not know so he says that so far the school was ours the school was of French people but now it has been transferred into the hand of German government and now it is their school not our school so it will take a lot of time when French people get united fight against German and get Alsace and Lorraine back from German so it can take a lot of time so this is what does it mean by that sentence but the child continued running and he reaches to the campus of the school he says that on the way I had planned everything he knew that the school campus was always full of noise and commotion every day children used to recite their lessons and to control and maintain the discipline in the classroom teachers always used to shout at them or they uh, keep striking their uh, cane or their stick or the ruler on the top of the benches and the or that uh, uh, podium or those things so he thought that when teacher will be busy and engaged in maintaining the discipline in the classroom unnoticed by the teacher still he will enter into the classroom but the moment he stepped into the school his whole plan went down the drain the reason being he came across a very unusual environment in the school that unusual and unique environment was a pin drop silence he said that I had counted on the commotion. The exact word used are I had counted on commotion. Commotion is the confused noise. So he said that I had counted on the commotion means on my whole way I had made a plan that I'll take benefit, I'll take advantage of the noise in the school. And in the pretext of that noise and commotion, I have entered my classroom without the knowledge of the teacher, without the things coming into the notice of Mr. Animal. But when there was a pin drop silence, his whole plan was a big waste only. Now he just in front of the classroom and he saw that all the students were sitting in their seats and there was very calm and quiet in composed class. Animal who was moving to and fro in the classroom suddenly his eyes alighted on the child he saw friends and he very politely invited him in to the classroom he was very much surprised because Animal was known to be very strict teacher but that day he was so polite he had never expected that politeness from that teacher but the moment he reached inside the classroom stepped inside the classroom his surprise became multiple the reason being he saw that animal was in his special dress which he used to put on on the special occasions only all the students were sitting in their seats and making no noise at all and the back benches of the class which always used to be empty they were occupied by the old villagers he couldn't understand anything he couldn't make out of the situation and then the reality dawns on friends. He comes to know about the reality. And how he comes to know about? The moment he goes inside and takes his seat, Animal starts speaking. And he says that, my dear students, today is my last lesson in French language. Because tomorrow, your new teacher will come as per the orders from Berlin. In place of French language, you will be taught German language. Your new teacher will come tomorrow and this is my last. The moment he said these things, Franz says that these words were thunderclap for me. Means it was a great shock for me. I had never expected these things. And suddenly everything became clear to me why the people were standing around that bulletin board and why did Mr. Walter send me that I'll get to my school or you will get to your school in plenty of time.
why Amazon was in a special dress, why there was an in-drop silence in the class as well as in the school campus and why the old villagers were sitting in the classroom. Everything became crystal clear to the young child. Now, M. Hamel's critical remarks. M. Hamel asked friends to recite or to tell the rules and regulations of principles. It was the homework given to them. Participle, sorry, that was the participle. So, friends, just before that, uh, his turn, he was expecting, he was thinking that, what would I not have given to be able to say that dreadful rules for the participles flawlessly in a clear and loud voice. This was his, I uh, can say, the wish and desire. He said that I could pay any cost if I could become that much confident and knowledgeable so that I could have narrated those rules and regulations completely flawlessly. But suddenly he hears his name and he got up at his place and got muddled up. He got confused. He couldn't speak even a single word. And this gave Emmanuel a chance to speak about the students as well as the parents as well as the old people also. And he said that you are not the worst little friends. We all are responsible for this situation. Students, parents as well as he blames himself also. He says that parents also are to be criticized in this case. Why to be criticized? The reason being in place of sending their children regularly to the school, they believe in sending them either to the farms or to the mills and factories so that children could earn for them a little bit more and support in the economical condition of the family. And he says that this is very much wrong. Children must be habituated to continuously come to school and regularly do their job. But parents could not understand this, uh, the, the importance of the education. That's why he criticizes his parents. Then he says that I am also not, I can say, uh, uh, less responsible. I am also equally responsible for this situation. The reason being, whenever I was not in mood of teaching, I used to declare holiday and I used to go for the fishing also. So I couldn't understand the importance of time. And today we all are in a great fix. The problem, the tough time. The reason being, we claim that we are friends. And we do not know how to read and how to write and how to speak our own language. And then he said that, my dear students, always love your mother tongue. By the way, German has imposed, officially they have imposed German language, which is to be taught in the schools tomorrow onwards. But when you are at home or inside uh, in your society, always stick to your national language or mother language, that is French. And he eulogizes. And when eulogizes French language, eulogizes, speaks proudly about the language. He glorifies French language and says that French language is number one most beautiful language. Next, he is the clearest language of the world. And third thing he tells about is it is the most logical language of the world. He says that that's why this is the beautiful language. So always keep learning your language, keep using your language. And then he gives a message. Till the time you continue to speak and use your language, that is French language, any nationals, whenever the people always use their mother tongue and their national language, the key to their freedom is in their hand. The reason being, whenever they uh, speak their language among themselves, they can stand united through the language because language is the medium of expression. They can express their feelings and their emotions and their ideas and this can help the whole, we can say, the country to stand united once again against Sermon. They can fight back and win back their lost territories and the provinces. So, this is how he tells us the importance of learning one's mother tongue or the national language. Then moving to next is Emmanuel's teaching of three subjects. That day, Emmanuel wanted to teach everything, whatever he knew, at the one go. So he started with grammar topics. He taught them grammar. Then he taught them, gave them the writing skills. And the third was the history. So he taught three things that day. Grammar, writings, as well as history. Three subjects he taught. And then suddenly he heard 
that it was 12 o'clock. The church clock struck 12 and at the very moment Azilus also, one name has been mentioned, then the Azilus. Azilus is a prayer actually at the 12, uh, when the uh, that clock struck 12, the people over there, the Christian people, they started singing their hymn, they started singing their devotion and the prayer. That prayer which is sung in the honor of the incarnation of Jesus Christ who comes and who is known to be the savior of the human race. So that prayer is known as Agilus. Agilus. So this, uh, when this 12 was struck by the clock, it was the time for the German soldiers also to break off from the drill and return to their bags. When they started coming back, Emmanuel got very much emotional and he couldn't speak even a single word. Soldiers written from the drill. So his throat chopped. He got overwhelmed with the emotions. Couldn't speak even a single word. And he just gesticulated the people. First he wrote on the board in a very bold and big letters. We love friends. This line he wrote on the board. It means we love friends means may friends live for long. It is a wish for friends to stand free for the coming centuries. And then he bowed his head against this dictum. And without speaking in a single word, he just gesticulated with the help of body language only. He indicated the children and the old people in the room that your class is over. Now you may disperse and leave. So students, this was the complete summary of this chapter. And now we will see the theme and the message of this chapter also. So as we talk about the theme, theme is the pain of the people. Actually, Alphonse Lotte talks about the pain of the people who lose their right to learn and use their own language due to the linguistic chauvinism of their conquerors. Whenever any country is, uh, can say, won by other countries, so they impose their own language out of the sense of linguistic superiority. So this pain he has, I can say, brought out with the help of this chapter. Now something, uh, we can have two sub themes in this way. Like uh, one is indifferent attitude of the teachers and the students towards the teaching and the learning process. And second uh, sub theme can be like postponing of essential things in life leads to human beings to face difficulty in their tough times. So these are the some themes. Now we talk about the message. So Alphonse told it once to pass on the message to the readers and the listeners that the last lesson uh, that uh, stresses on the importance of education and the necessity to respect and learn one's own language. And this story draws our attention to one more thing that is the unfair practice of linguistic chauvinism and it refers to an unreasonable pride in one's own language uh, while disregarding all the other languages as inferior. So this was the message which is you know that put forward by the author Alphonse Dore. So friends I think uh, you got the gist and the crux of the chapter by now and that's all for today. We'll see you with more videos. Till then keep watching, keep learning. Bye bye. Take care.